Motivation is what gets you started, but habits are what keep you going. That's a classic Jim Rohn quote. Now, I want to share a little story first, because when I think about some of the habits that I'm going to share with you all, I had to kind of make a list of the bad habits first. And I talk about this almost every month, like, all right, y'all, is this a safe space? Because I expose myself every single month. I literally share my flaws, my quirks, my the weird things that I'm ashamed of. But I do that to build a level of transparency and trust so that you all don't think that you're so far away from like where you want to be. And you see me showing up and coaching and, and speaking life into y'all, but you understand that it's a process and it's a journey. And I am so committed to it for life. This is something that I am just invested in for life. So when I want, I want to talk first about a little bit of the story, because this month I had to make a really, really hard decision. And I had to cut ties with someone. I had to let them go, um, someone that I hired. And I think of this analogy, and it, it, it's very popular. Many of you have probably already heard of it. But what happens when you hold a glass of water for too long? What happens to that water? The weight of the water doesn't change, but the longer you hold it, the heavier it gets. And so I was holding on to shame and guilt and what could I have done more to make this work? And, oh, I just messed up so badly. And, oh my goodness, what, what could I have done better? And that whole week, I just held on to this shame. I was like, oh, I just, oh, I could have done better. I could have done more. And it felt so bad and it just weighed on me. So my question for you is, what have you been holding on to this week? That's getting heavy. What are you holding on to that it's time to let go of? Because before I could develop good habits, I had to get rid of the bad habits first. I had to learn how to say, okay, life and entrepreneurship, it's going to be full of hard conversations, hard communication, letting go of people who I know aren't good for me in the future. And all of that comes with this journey and personal development. So let's start with the bad habits that I first had to lose in order to develop the good habits. <laughs> Number one, being late. I was that person and I'm not even going to blame my ethnic background. I would grow up and I remember like whenever I had basketball practice, I would tell my mom like 30 minutes to an hour earlier of when I was actually needing to get picked up because I would factor in her late time. And so I saw it a lot growing up that, okay, my mom was always 30 minutes to an hour late and she got away with it. Like I was just able to adjust my time for her. And so I kind of grew up thinking like, oh, well, it's culturally accepted in my family, my cousins, brothers and sisters, parents, like that's just how we operated. And we understood nothing was ever that urgent. And if you made someone wait, you made them wait. And I realized how disrespectful that actually was. It was saying that my time has more value than yours. And so I'm going to make you wait. And that was a really bad habit that I had to learn how to get rid of. Because at the end of the day, you are developing relationships with people. And if you are, if you are showing them that like, I can't respect your time, they might cut you out of their lives. Okay. So being late was the first habit I had to drop. Number two, Second bad habit that I had to drop was making excuses. <laughs> What's that quote about me making excuses? Excuses are like buttholes. We all have them and they all stink. <laughs> I had to realize that glow. You can come up with this elaborate excuse. You can make up all of these reasons why you couldn't get there on time. Oh, the traffic. Oh, I just, I forgot my keys. So I ran back to my home and da, 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 da. Mm -mm. Excuses was a bad habit I had to drop. And there's also this quote about asking for forgiveness instead of permission. No, <laughs> no, no more. That's a bad habit. And I realized that it was in my conditioning to be that way. And I wasn't going to allow that anymore. Number three goes in hand with number two, not taking accountability. If you were someone like me, where you were charming enough, maybe in class, you can always you know, growing up, you're always able to tell the teacher just enough reasons why you couldn't get the homework in on time. But if she gave you 20 more minutes, you, she would be reading the best paper that you'd ever written. Like I was that person. I was always finding ways to just kind of like finagle my way through rules and, and all these things. 
And that was such a bad habit. I was like, no, Glow, take accountability. If this paper is due on Friday by noon, stop waiting till the night before <laughs> to turn in your work. Stop waiting till the night before to work on it. Like I had to start developing habits that I knew would, what I would thank myself for in the future. Okay. So bad habits. Number four, a bad habit I had to drop was looking for a shortcut, <laughs> looking for a shortcut. I was the kind of person growing up, again, I am exposing myself, but I'm a changed woman. <laughs> so I'm sharing these, hoping that you all aren't judging me on the other side. <laughs> but I was always looking for a shortcut. I was like, okay, if this is the result, if this is the goal, if this is what I need to do, what is the quickest way that I can get this done? And that might also mean sloppy. Like I, I didn't take pride in the work I was doing because I was looking to get it done as quick as possible. And that's not healthy. When you're looking for shortcuts in life, you'll always get cut short. Looking for shortcuts does not always mean that you are saving time or that you are doing it in a more sustainable or productive way. So looking for a shortcut was another bad habit that I had to drop. Number five, playing the victim. Now, how many of you have this story of your past where you very, very well may have been the victim, but you're so attached to that story, it's become a part of your identity that you stay in that victimhood. Oh, well, this person hurt me. And so you carry on to that hurt because you, you want the pity and you want the sympathy and the empathy that it breeds. But staying in that identity of victimhood is not going to benefit who you're becoming. Your highest self, your best self, your favorite self. That Lately, I've been learning how to switch those words from best self to favorite self. Because you won't always be your best self. You won't always be your highest self. But your favorite self, think about who that person is. Are they playing the victim? Are they like making excuses? Are they lacking accountability? All of, all of these things that we're talking about all month about habit development is thinking about the person that you want to be in the future. It's taking into consideration the journey that you're on, this lifelong evolution of personal development, okay? Number six, getting attached to an outcome. This one is hard, and this one I'm still working through, but let's, let's pretend we're, we're making progress. <laughs> Being attached to an outcome means... I will be so invested in a situation, in a project, in something, only if the outcome is exactly as I dreamed of it. I would be like, okay, like I will only be happy if the circumstances line up and they work out like this. I would be so attached to the outcome that I forget to enjoy the process. I overlook the journey. I take for granted like all the things that I'm meant to learn while I'm in pursuit of that outcome. And oftentimes the best things about our journeys, our lives, our, our entrepreneurial pursuits is who we're becoming in the direction of that thing that we want. Like do not miss, don't bypass that. Don't forget about that part. A lot of times the person who you are in like those hardest moments, that's who you really are. I recently saw a meme that says, the way you say representative to an autom automated machine, that's your real self. Now, if you've ever been calling your bank or calling customer service, a lot of times, you know, they'll say, oh, if, you, if you'd like to speak to representative, say representative. And you're so triggered, like representative, I'm ready to talk to a human. That's your true self. <laughs> I died laughing when I saw that because I was like, <gasps> attacked. <laughs> I was like, wait. Sometimes I yell representative because I'm tired of going through four layers of automated systems only to not hear the option that I want. Representative! <laughs> I'm ready for a representative. <laughs> Sorry, we cannot understand you. Representative, representative, take a deep breath, Glow. Representative. <laughs> the way you say representative to a robot is who you really are. <laughs> Never forget that. OK, so getting attached to an outcome emotionally, that was a bad habit that I had to drop. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.